So my name is Connor Clark and I'm a photographic artist originally from New Zealand and I've been living in Berlin for the last just over six years. I wanted to come back to New Zealand and I noticed that there was this residency advertised in South Auckland which is where my parents live and I started looking at the park itself and I was very interested in it because because of its state, that it was a new park. My interests were pretty much the evidence of human use of the land. And this park had layers of this human use, so it had the Māori occupation you could see in the par sites. So visible use of the land, the way it's been sculpted and used, but also loads of evidence of industrial use. On my walks, the first thing that struck me was actually the gorse, which is probably not the right thing to say. It was in full bloom at the time and it was just, the air was filled with this coconut scent and I'd, ne I'd never even noticed that gorse had a scent. So now I've been sort of focusing on its life cycle and I've been using it in my work in different ways. So I've printed two photographs of a hand holding some gorse and, or they're my hands. And they're the selfies, so it was actually quite, quite tricky because my cable isn't very long. So yeah, there's two hands um, holding gorse and in, in different stages of, of the gorse life cycle. So I've got um, the gorse in bloom and the gorse gone to seed. And then the third one will be the regrowth period, which I, I have to collect some on the way back. It's become less about looking for pictures and rather engaging with the landscape in a different way. I've sort of been collecting things that I find and bringing them back to the house and photographing them there. And this is something I haven't really done before. I've, before I've had a very, very clear picture about what I was looking for and how I was going to photograph it. And this has been a lot more experimental. I guess over the last few years I've been focusing on a perhaps post-industrial subject, you could say, using a lot of landscape painting conventions from well, the 17th to 19th centuries, um, predominantly the picturesque or sublime genres. So for me, composition is very important. They're asymmetrical, they're characterised by age and decay, overlapping planes in the distance, hazy distances, shadowed foregrounds, and you're sort of led into the compositions with serpentine paths or rivers or figures or boats and there will always be a leading subject somewhere in the middle distance. So in a lot of these pictures I've been making at Waitawa, my leading subject has been, for example, this red island that we see in all of my vistas. There are also other, loads of other wonderful things about the park, that it's been planted in native forest and that soon in 20 years my pictures are going to look very, really quite different. And that's quite exciting, actually. I decided that having two months would be a good opportunity to begin this darkroom process again because it's been over 10 years since I last printed my own pictures. They let me know that there was actually a sort of sleep out area which was unrenovated and that I could use that. It's kind of perfect, so there are two rooms, so one room, this side is the darkroom side, um, which took some work to get it light safe, but I got there in the end. I went through four rolls of gaffer in the process and um, on, well, there was no water coming in, we had to solve that problem, so the ranger, Stan the ranger, he plumbed that in for me and a builder came and set up this, um, this old stainless steel um, shower base in here, so that's perfect. So uh, there was that one thing and then borrowing all the stuff I needed from various institutions and friends. <laughs> and then the other side is a sort of a workroom, so I view the prints and I work out what I'm doing and that sort of thing. Yeah, play music so that I can hear it really loudly through the wall. This is fibre-based paper and it's very sensitive. 
when it's wet, it's the true size, and when it dries, it shrinks quite a lot, and that causes the paper to curl up. You can press the paper back, but this is sort of a cheat's way of making it flat. So this is, the pasture is a mixture of rye and clover, and it's, it's pretty pristine. And then you see the fence weaving into the background and all these new plantings. You still see a lot of the old stumps. They would have been, they're all gum trees, Australian gum trees, that they cleared from that back area. There's a little bit of gorse in the corner, naturally, and tussock. So it's, it's a diptych, so there's another side. There's a test print up there, but that's just a really flat, light print on cheap paper. So this is my cupboard where I dry my negatives and I try to keep the dust out. I've moved on from gorse to wilding pine and macrocarpa, which are a huge problem in the park of course because um, they, they come up and you know they cast shade and then the, the native trees can't get, can't get through so they have to, people have to control them so there are contractors coming in all the time controlling all of these wilding species. And that's, I hung out with them for two hours, and that is a really hard job, what they do. I was exhausted after two hours, and they do it every day. Hardcore. <laughs> it's really hard work. So there's the numbers underneath of each negative roll. And these ones, this is Cody. So they would have planted a lot of natives, and then they have to maintain the area for, I think they said three years, for example. So on this day, they were controlling for Things like nightshade, macrocarpa and pine that had come up wild there. So I kept a couple and took them home and took some photographs of them. This is the island. I'm going to print this next. It's a silhouette of the island. I'm going to print it quite dark so you see it as a silhouette and you can see all the little um, diggers and, and bits of machinery just in the skyline there. I don't really have a sort of defined rhythm. I mean, some days I, I just walk, and some days I, I just read. Some days I stay in the dark room all day, but other times I do all of those things in one day. It really just depends. But in terms of what I'm looking for in the park, I, I did have a list of things before I arrived that I knew would be here, that I knew that I wanted to make pictures about. But I also discover a lot of new things along the way. I guess if I think of picturing here after I leave and go back to Germany, strangely it would be a view from inside the house, looking out, because I sit there often, looking out at the sea. And I guess the thing I miss the most will be that horizon, because I don't have a horizon. You very rarely see a horizon in Berlin, because it's, there are so many high-rise buildings. So to be away from the city and away from friends I find actually quite, quite good. Yeah, I love isolation. And I've made a lot of pictures. I, I don't normally make this many pictures. Since it's my last week of my residency, it's nice to revisit this power site because this, well, I used to come up here all the time during my residency. And I mean, sometimes I wouldn't bring my camera, I'd just come up and sit here and have a look out at the sea and it was also one of my first exciting experiences here because after my first visit up here I went down to the beach and met some really nice people fishing and it was their first time on the beach and then I walked up home and then shortly after I looked out the people had gone but these the three orcas were there so I always have this kind of magical connection with the pa because I feel like I keep feeling like that had something to do with the visit but yeah I guess I'll miss this the most and the isolation and some of these wonderful people that have spent time with, like Stan, the ranger, he's, he's really wonderful. And just having time to think and spend some time on a project. But I think I'll be very homesick for this place when I leave, actually. I feel homesick even thinking about leaving. <laughs>